peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There's probably no one here who doesn't know the familiar poem that Clement Moore wrote, which is, Don't Say David. Ah, I caught you. I didn't know either who the author was until I looked it up. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Stockings were hung by the chimney with care and hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. That first line of that poem got me to thinking a little bit. What was it like the night before the first Christmas? That's what... The scripture tells us just exactly what that was like before Christ came that first Christmas. Think about it. Before Jesus was born in Bethlehem, what was this world like? What was happening in the world? The Bible tells us it was like this. First of all, the world was cursed by sin. It was lost in sin, hopelessly lost. The Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve chose to rebel and move their own way, mankind fell from God's grace and favor. Sin brought with it suffering, toil, difficulty, trouble, pain, eventually death. Sin also brought with it weeds and briars to grow among the crops, so it made the joy of working the soil much more difficult. Disease and broken relationships were also in tune before Christ came. That's the way it continued century after century, and human sin spread and multiplied. Second thing that stands out, God was silent. Heaven was silent. During the Old Testament time, God would send prophet after prophet to speak to his word to the people. And yet, these prophets like Elijah and Elisha and Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel and just to name a few, when finally the last one came of the Old Testament time period, Malachi, God was silent. The heavens were silent. For 400 years there was silence, God not speaking to his people, even though many of his people would gather in the temple and in the... Um, synagogues, God remained silent. Third thing stands out. God's people were looking for the promised Messiah. Way back in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve fell into sin, God not only judged them as guilty, but he also gave them a precious promise. And that promise is that one day a Messiah, a Savior would come, and Israel kept watching for this promised Messiah. Many looked sincerely to see the promised Messiah. God was ready, waiting for just the right time. The day before Jesus was born, people looked for Messiah. God had a plan, is the other thing, the final thing that happened. And later we see Paul talk about that plan. He says, when the fullness of time had come. The day before Jesus came to earth, that first Christmas, God determined that now was the time. And this is the way the world was to be the day before Jesus came. On that special night, God sent Jesus through Mary into Bethlehem and announced the news to shepherds and fields nearby. <coughs> Jesus' birth was put into motion. God's plan to save his people from their sins was set in motion. To do this, Jesus would keep the law perfectly carry on a three-year ministry, choose disciples to carry on after he left, and then he gave his life on the cross. Jesus gave his life to overthrow the power of sin, to crush Satan, sin, and death for us. Jesus died as payment for all sin, but the resurrection seals the deal. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. Always on our lips, right? In Galatians 4, we read from St. Paul, 
God sent forth his son born of woman born under the law to redeem those who are under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts crying, Abba, Father, Daddy. So you are no longer a slave but a son, and if a son, then an heir through God. The birth of Jesus shattered the silence of heaven, shattered the silence of God. He came and fulfilled all the hopes and dreams that had been spoken of about this promised Messiah. Jesus is the only way back to God. And so the prophecies that were given to the Old Testament believers were fulfilled in Christ, every single one of them. And we could not only have fellowship during our time of earth, but for all eternity. Jesus came at the perfect moment when the fullness of time has come. Everything changed with the spirit of birth of Jesus Christ because he had come to make possible life with God. Isaiah made a prophecy that we heard read a bit ago. The poor will receive good news, the brokenhearted shall be healed, the captives might be set free, the blind receive their sight, the oppressed would be filled with freedom. Of course, his arrival went pretty much unnoticed in the then known world, because after all, he was born not as a king, but in a poor lowly stable in an obscure town without pomp and ceremony but he came and fulfilled every word that had been prophesied about his coming when jesus began his ministry as david pointed out during his reading today from isaiah 61 jesus used those words to speak to the people of his day and say today this scripture is fulfilled in your midst to those who mocked and ridiculed what did jesus say to them Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. To those who believed in him, what did he say? Today, you will be with me in paradise. We have the best good news ever. May God bless you and me in enabling us to share that good news with those who have yet to meet Jesus. And now may that peace that surpasses all human understanding Keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Would you please stand with me?